Hi everybody and welcome to another Excel tutorial video for APA style. Uh, so today what I wanted to do in Excel was talk about some basic table editing tricks and tips. Uh, now this is going to be a little bit different from my graph making uh, videos because uh, there are two camps out uh, out here for making tables in um, APA style. Uh, these tables are quite a bit more prescriptive by the APA style manual than figures and a lot of people tend to make them in uh, Word, for example, just make the tables directly in Word. I learned how to make tables in Excel, and so uh, if you want to make tables in Excel, then this is the video for you. We are going to do a simple yet multi-level table in this tutorial. Um, I'm going to go through it step by step and narrate as best I can what, I, what I'm doing. There will probably be um, fits and starts here, and uh, I'll be working through some stuff. I haven't made a table in a while. Um, I do have a model to work off of. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get started. So in Excel, you can really start a table anywhere. Um, because the columns and rows can be moved and resized any way they want. Um, so I can take this J and move it all the way back and forth and uh, make it a different size, make it bigger, make it smaller. Um, I'm going to be using um, the various features of alignment here and wrapping text and merging uh, cells together to get to get it very clean and then um, we'll use the uh, bordering tool to make um, the these uh, gray cell lines disappear while making um, the use of the black line borders that APA table making requires so you know all of that goes into table making and you can really start anywhere. You can make uh, tables anywhere you want on the the spreadsheet. Um, you can make different tables in different sheets uh, by adding multiple sheets here. Uh, I tend to cluster tables together that are of the same ilk in one worksheet, and then I'll make a new worksheet for a different set of tables, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to um, present to you a table, a real table, um, it's of unpublished data, um, but we are going to um, go ahead and utilize real data for this um, tutorial just because it's easier and it's the model that I'm working on um, for you all. Okay, so the first thing we have to do for any table is to um, uh, number the table. And so what I end up doing is I set a hard edge for my table and I'll put in the uh, oops, didn't mean to get that J in there I'll put the table number right at the top okay and that's the first line of your table and I, I keep it in the table uh, for two reasons one it just keeps the table together and um, I don't have to worry about um, Mis misremembering or misnumbering the table when I put it in my manuscript. And then two, probably the more important reason, is that I tend to um, you know, put the table on one page in the manuscript and because it requires a table number, that table number is always a part of the table that I copy and paste over to Word. Now this, again, this is a thing that you can do with the table function in Word. I just find that um, the table function in Word is a bit more finicky, and I like playing with the cells. They're a little bit more malleable, and um, I don't have to contend with a um, eight and a half wide uh, screen. I can just make the table as, as big or as small as I want, and then resize it later 
when I import it into Word. Okay, so the first uh, the first cell here is um, my left edge. So I just randomly chose column E here, and uh, and and that's my left edge. So there won't be any aspects of the tables that will that uh, of the table, excuse me, that won't uh, that will be here in um, A, B, C, or D. So E column E is the left edge of the table. Now, the second thing you want to do is put in your title uh, for the table. Uh, this, um, this particular title isn't that great, but it isn't also, I mean, table titles are never really all that great. But because you don't necessarily need notes, for tables, unless you have some notation or anything like that, the table title is actually extremely important to tell the reader what it is they're looking at in the table. So this table title, and we'll do some formatting afterward, is the mean, and then in parentheses I'm going to put in um, SD for standard deviation, because the mean um, values that I put in the table are going to be followed by their standard deviations in parentheses. Um, and there'll be several places where mean and then parentheses SD um, will appear in this table. Um, but it's mean acceptance rates. And a, a, a small note for uh, table titles is that they are in um, title caps, so main words of the title or uh, first letter is capitalized. Of the true problem set for MT and MP revisions. Oops, revisions. Okay. And so that is my unformatted title. Okay. The next thing we want to do is figure out where um, the, the sort of hierarchy that we need for the remaining part of the table. So um, as far as APA is considered, this title will have a dark line underneath it, so a black uh, borderline. Okay, so everything underneath this title, the, the cells that I've highlighted, are going to be a part of the table. So I need to figure out when I um, do this, what uh, I plan on um, including in my table. So we already know that we're going to have means and standard deviations. Okay, means and standard deviations. That's actually the only thing that we're going to have in this table. So it's a very simple table. Okay. Um, now, as far as the size of this table goes, this is actually a fairly decently sized table for an 8.5 by 11 um, word manuscript. Um, because the edge of this table, if I can consider the edge of the L column to be my right edge, you know, the, the left edge of the E column being my left edge, then um, this will fit this, uh, from mean to revisions. Um, not changing font size or anything like that will fit uh, in a uh, eight and a half wide piece of paper. So that's fantastic. Uh, so we we aren't going to have to do any resizing with this one. Okay. So we know here that um, this is going to have a black bottom to it. Okay. Um, and what I want to do is set up where my levels uh, are going to go. So generally speaking, um, you have a uh, set of labels for your data on the left side of the table and then the actual data on the right side of the table. And the data is um, given some hierarchical structure uh, according to various labels under here. So let me just um, show that visually speaking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my two data columns, see I have MT and MP revisions. 
So for my, I'm going to give um, MT its set of two columns here and MP a set of two columns right here. So I'm going to put in uh, MT and then over here I'm going to put in MP. Okay. Now you're, you might be thinking, why do that when um, you can just put MP on in this cell? And I'll show you that um, with the merge and center that we can give MT all of this space. And so not everything's clumped together. We don't have to smash all of our text together. Okay. Now MT is um, what we need to, um, to label there. Those are the kinds of revisions that people did in these problems. Uh, these are reasoning problems in case you're curious. Um, so MT stands for modus tollens, okay? Uh, and so we're going to put in um, uh, M, which is the APA abbreviation for mean, and then in parentheses, standard deviation. And we're going to do that again over here for MP, which, if you're curious, stands for modus ponens, okay? Now, we haven't done any formatting. I'm just setting up where I plan on putting the numbers, Okay. Um, now, so it's very important that I put these here. These are the bottom uh, pieces of <clears throat> the um, table labeling structure. So imagine these are the columns, and then we're going to put in the rows, and then, you know, we're going to put in a table matrix here. Okay. So a black line is going to actually go from L all the way over to E, okay, um, and there'll be a black line under MT and MP because uh, that's the hierarchy structure of the table. Uh, so what we need to do is then now uh, give a global label to our um, rows, okay, so these are our columns, okay, now we're going to set a row, and because this is the bottom aspect of the t uh, of the the table labels rows and columns this is going to have a black edge uh, underneath it so i'm just going to use the far left edge the left edge created um, at when i started with um, the row category label so that category label for this particular data set is problem type okay and so Underneath all of this is going to be the information that the reader is looking for. So there's going to be rows of problem types, and in the MT and MP columns, there's going to be the mean and standard deviation. Okay? So next, we are going to put in those problem types. Now, I'm just going to quickly write all of these in um, because, uh, you know, the, the actual problems themselves are not important. Definitional, okay, is the first kind of problem type. Now, what I'm going to do here is I have actually two kinds of definitional problems. I have um, class inclusion, which I'm going to actually put here um, in the cell next to it, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to resize. Um, resize the definitional uh, by double clicking so I have this uh, new cursor so the white crosshairs change into the um, black post with arrows going left and right I hover over the edge of a um, of a column or a row you can see there it goes up and down um, I clicked on E just to make sure that it would do E um, and then I double click on that, and uh, I forgot hit uh, the mean and standard deviations in there. No, we don't want that yet. So I'm going to undo that. <laughs> forgot about that. And then just drag it so definitional is um, fully seen. Okay. And so class inclusion's right there. And then I'm going to um, give a cell of space. You don't have to do the cell of space. I like to do the cell of space because um, it uh, 
it, it just makes it easier to read. Now you could put property assignment here and then just make the rows sort of bigger to give more space between class inclusion and property assignment. I'm just doing this to show you what it all looks like at, at, in the end. Okay, so we have definitional problem types and there are two subtypes of it. And then there's a second kind of problem type called uh, empirical. Um, and they have the same class inclusion and property assignment pieces. So we just do that, okay? Now property assignment is the last row of the table. And so from here, so E all the way over to L, there is going to be a bottom black bar to border the table, okay? Um, and so if you're probably uh, aware now that um, there are no vertical black bars in APA tables. It's only horizontal, and uh, they, they go uh, in steps. So you have one underneath the title, you have one that um, uh, you have uh, have any black bar, horizontal bars that set up a hierarchy in labeling your columns over here. So you'll see that we'll put um, uh, black bars underneath MT and MP, and then you'll have a final uh, a black bar that um, ends the labeling piece of the table, and then you'll have a final black bar for the bottom of the table. So now that we have our labels in, we can just easily put all of these numbers in. So I'm just going to do that. Like I said, uh, I'm not going to explain what these numbers actually are. Um, they are proportions. They are acceptance rates. So um, you won't see any go above uh, one. Um, here we go. It's a shame this data should have been published, but uh, had to abandon it. Oh well. Okay, so put in all of this data in here, and uh, you know by far this is probably the most tedious part, unless you know you have your um, tables from SPSS or JASP or PSPP, or Stata, or R, or something. Um, oops. Uh, 0.48. And okay. So the data's in there. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to start formatting this table. So all of the data is in. It's organized in ways that I want it to be organized. And so we are going to now... Um, Format it, okay? So, uh, first thing I want to do is uh, highlight it all and um, uh, change the font to Times New Roman. So unlike graphs, tables should be in the same font as your um, text, which is generally speaking Times New Roman, okay? Um, table 1 is not italicized, but your um, title is, so um, we're going to just go over to the uh, quick buttons here and click I, so it italicizes the table, okay, and it looks like it's just going across all of these cells, but it really only exists in E5, okay. Um, other things that we need to format as far as font go are... Um, the uh, M's and SD's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control down and highlight these two in the cell and then go over to um, the italic button and click it. It didn't do what I wanted it to do, so let's do that. And then we will um, do it in here as well. Hmm. I guess it doesn't want to do that. Okay, so mean and standard deviation. Cool. Okay. So, that quickly tells the reader that's what they're looking for. Okay, the means and standard deviation. I'm going to highlight everything once more from E to L. And I'm going to go to the alignment. And I'm just going to, instead of the default um, bottom of the cell 
uh, bottom align, I'm going to just do center align. So when I make these um, cells a little bit bigger, uh, the words and the, the text and numbers will stay in the center as opposed to going to the top or the bottom of the uh, cell as I expand them. Okay, because once we start putting in the borders, it, it's going to be uh, clear that we'll want to give a little bit more space to our cells instead of it being all smushed vertically. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is create the um, left edge and right edge of this table. So uh, I'm going to highlight table 1 and then the cells all the way to L. This will set the table 1 row as a single cell. So what it's basically going to do is break down all of these walls. So instead of so merge and center is the default button here, but we have a drop down menu where I can just do what's called merge across. And so table 1 will stay in the E column position, but it will destroy all of the um, other columns um, for this particular row, row 4. Okay. So now table 1 exists in a single cell from E to L in row 4. And so if I click down, it will go back to just E5 singly, but if I go back up, it will go to um, E through L4. It's a fantastic feature. I'm going to do the same thing here with my title, okay, my table title. I'm going to merge across. So that gets rid of all of the um, all of the uh, cell walls for F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. Okay, much like we did last time. Um, <coughs> now, over here where I had M, T, and M, P fill out two columns, uh, and you know I have a column space between. I am going to highlight all of these for M, T, and I'm just going to click Merge and Center. Cancel that. I have to do it by row. <laughs> Forgot about that. I have to do it um, by row. Sometimes you wish that. Even these empty cells I'm going to merge and center, so the MT column basically follows the same structure, even though there's no data whatsoever in those cells. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for MP. Just hit and merge and center. Oops, I missed a row there. Okay, even the blank rows again. So you can see here that uh, all of this information is getting centered across those two columns. Perfect. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to do is um, merge across. Oops, merge across just the class inclusion and property assignment cells. So um, those are all as one. The reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to get rid of all of the um, vertical cell uh, cell um, walls, so it's going to be make it's going to make it easier for for us to um, um, get rid of those vertical walls because remember there aren't any in an APA table, so I'm going to uh, merge across class inclusion here. I'm going to do the same thing with um, the empty cells. Okay. Merge across. I'm going to do that again for class inclusion and again for uh, merge across for the blank one and then merge across for property assignment. Okay. And so all of those follow the same general pattern. Okay, um, I'm going to expand E column to the width of problem type. So problem type is going to exist by itself in E7, in this cell by itself. And so I can merge across these cells here, um, much like the ones above them. And so they have the same, th these all are the same width. Okay, hope everyone's still with me.
All right. The next step I need to do is start shading um, the borders. So I need to get rid of borders, and I need to um, uh, put on the black borders. So what I like to do first is um, uh, highlight everything. And the cool thing you could do is just start from table one and drag down because of that hard edge on the right that I did. It, it knows that it, I want all of the columns, okay? And the, what what you need to do is that uh, these um, vertical lines, uh, uh, vertical cell lines, and in the middle here, which, which we have to get rid of, these horizontal cell borders, um, are actually gray. And so if I were to copy and paste this into Word, they would uh, show in the table itself. So we don't want that. So we actually have to color them white. So we go to um, the um, border options, and we are going to um, select the um, border that we want and the color that we want. So the first thing I want to do is select the line color. Uh, so we go to line color, and we go to white. So automatic is black. We'll come back to black um, when we put in those um, appropriate black borders. But for now, we want white, okay? And it brings up the um, the pencil icon where you could just click on a border and get rid of it. Uh, but that's a bit too um, that too time consuming. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to high. I didn't want to do that. Uh, let's uh, undo. Um, and we're going to click on uh, all borders. Okay. Now, what that did was that was uh, that took the entire selection of the table and made every single uh, every single cell border white. So the inside borders, the outside borders. Um, the vertical borders and the horizontal borders. It made every single one white, and you can see that it kind of just pops um, out. It, it looks like it pops out of, and it's a little visual, visual perceptual trick. Uh, you know, some gestalt psychology for you um, in this tutorial. Um, it looks like it sits on top of the cells because it has all of this um, white around it. Um, and so the final thing that we need to do is um, get these. Uh, black borders in. So now we go back to here and just insert them in where we need to insert them in. So I'm going to start with the title and we're going to change um, the border selection to bottom border. Now the color is already white and so it just made another white border but we can go back to line color and go back to black either choose automatic or um, black itself and uh, put that in. Um, again, it brings up the pencil tool. We don't need to use that because we've already selected which one we want. And so because the cell is already selected, we hit the black border button and boom, there's our black border. Okay. We do that again for this set of cells. Okay. So problem type, this blank set, uh, mean and standard deviation for MT, mean and standard deviation deviation for MP. We're going to do that again. It already it saved the last selection from last time. So we just need to click that and it puts in a black border there. And then the final place that we need to put a black border is at the bottom of the table. And so we click that again. And there we go. We have a black border on the table. Now, um, visually speaking, this is generally fine, leaving MT and MP there. Um, Lots of times, though, what you'll see is a black border underneath these two to mark it as a hierarchical label, as opposed to what the data is, or the data are, excuse me. Um, it's the label for um, that particular set of data, uh, data. So, for example, definition, class inclusion, MT, this is the mean and standard deviation. So, um, you'll put that there. Now, that table's done. You can um, highlight the whole thing, copy and paste it into a Word document, and it will travel over there exactly as you have it here. Um, it's, uh, it's 
pretty uh, pretty good. Now, of course, this is a simple table. Tables can get quite a bit more complex um, from here, and that's where your APA manual comes from on how to organize it. But as long as you can um, visualize the hierarchy in your mind, maybe sketch it out on a piece of paper um, first, uh, that might be a good idea. Um, I, I tended to do that uh, when I was I first started making APA tables. Um, so you know, it's it, again, like I said, this sort of thing can be done in Word. You can color the cells white, the inside cells white, and the ones that you want black, you know, to make them um, APA standardized. But, um, like I said, I like playing with Excel because I think it gives a little bit more functionality. I'm not hamstrung by the formatting um, demons of, of Word. As much as I love um, Word and its functionality, sometimes its formatting can be a bit unwieldy, so I like to come to Excel and just sort of have a free reign of the formatting of the cells and the tables, etc. Um, the final thing that um, you can actually do, and this is completely optional, is you can add um, in some spacing for um, these rows so as to not make them um, so smushed vertically. So we can give some spacing between, um, you know, mean, uh, the, the, the table uh, one and the title and set it apart slightly from <clears throat> the, um, the line. Um, there's no, as far as I can tell, there's no uh, set value that you need to do. Obviously, you get, when you start to move these, you get height um, in inches and in uh, pixels and whatnot. So, or, uh, actually, really not sure what the first number is. I think it's, I guess it's point, uh, 21 point, and then 28 pixels. So we can do that. Uh, and then we can do that for MT and MP, give them a little separation. Same thing with problem type and the means and standard deviation. Um, I would say, I'm, I'm doing this a little bit willy-nilly, uh, but I would say, like, you know, maybe find a number that actually um, you can, like, 21, so it's at least uh, consistent throughout. You know, I did, let me do 21 here. I think I did 21 on the other one, yeah. And then you could do the same thing with definitional and class inclusion to, to pop that away from the line. And then, like I said, you can um, get rid of that and, and decrease the space for 9, or you can actually just delete the row. Okay, and we can delete row 10 now. Okay, and then we can delete row 11 and bring the numbers that much closer. Uh, whatever you want. I mean, this table looks fine to me as well. So it all depends on what you want to do um, to display your data. And then you can make um, the width of 8 the same as 9, 10, and 11 here. Okay. So I'm going to um, undo those changes that I made <laughs> um, just to bring the table back to how we finished. Uh, feel free to, to send me any questions. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Um, at Professor A. Swan, and uh, email me aswan at eureka.edu. Um, thanks for watching this APA table tutorial. Um, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Bye!